All right. Welcome to today's stream. Uh, we streamed. Well, we worked on the problem for three hours yesterday. Day 10, part two. We couldn't quite crack it, but I uh, had a hard time sleeping without it solved. So I think I, uh, I solved it. Let me just show you what I wrote up on my Kindle scribe. Uh, this is the one of the shapes. This is the shape of uh, this one. And uh, whoop, whoop. and what was happening is that we were counting. So, so I expanded it, right? So this is like on a, so each square here is four squares here. And what we were doing before is that we were, we were measuring the uh, area of this whole thing, right? That's where that 26 came from. And the, and like the four, like here, right? So that it was a whole area. But we needed to actually deduct the area that the curve occupies. So, uh, A. Felix 5, who commented a lot yesterday, he mentioned this, right? You know, it's minus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.5, but we didn't quite manage to get there. So then I sat down and wrote, you know, okay, so here, this L here, this is gonna, this, the area of this L is then gonna be one, right? And the area of any north or south is just uh, two. And then the areas of these, so outward facing corners have an area of one, but inward facing corners have an area of three. And that was the trick we were missing yesterday. We needed this uh, distinction between outward and inward facing corners. Um, so I wrote some more code from yesterday. You may recognize this is the green area code. And uh, it's quite similar, but it's just saying that, okay, now we're counting in fours instead of one, 0 0.25. I didn't want to involve the floats here. So then uh, we add, you know, four times Y. So just add everything above if we're going east. Uh, but if you're going, uh, if you're going east into this and then you go up, okay. You cover like half the area above that because you you go like half east in this case, and similar here in the seven, you're going a half point east, right? And then similarly for west, if you go west, we deduct everything above that, right? Uh, but for F and L, we're also we're going a little bit west, and then. Um, same with north and south, actually. So it's not just... Uh, so if, if you're hitting the pipe directly, you're not adding anything. But if you go if you go into this F here, you're also take, going a little bit east. And if you're hitting this 7 here, you're going a little bit west, right? So that we add here and we subtract here. So we really follow the curve. Uh, and we make it sure... Thank you, Kretlin. This is my Indian camel shirt. It's a kurta, actually. Anyway, I think we figured this out. Uh, so then this calculates the area correctly. But then we had to figure out the area of the curve itself, right? So this calculates the whole area. Now we just want to see how much the curve itself occupies, right? So, you know, like this here, right? So the curve itself uh, occupies some area. So then I wrote that down here, right? So here, this one occupies this. So the, the inner part is going to be two here. Uh, two units of this, we counted by force, right? 
So if you take this little J corner here, um, so I looked at this picture basically, right? So if you're going, if you're going uh, from this, coming from the north, you're going south into this one, you count one, right? If you're going west, uh, east into this one, you count one. And then, so, and then if you go, if you're going west into this L here, you count three, right? And similarly here, if you go east into the seven, you count three. So that's just basically saying here, right? East into the seven, we're taking this kind of corner. Um, and then this one is going to be outside. Uh, and that worked. So it works for the examples. Okay, if we run this now on the examples, it does give us the right numbers for the examples. And there was one more trick we had to do. Uh, we had to also... Um, so what would happen sometimes, so you have to go clockwise for this to work, right? You have to, that's the Green's theorem, positively oriented, whatever you call it. Uh, and what would happen in this big case here is that uh, the S is somewhere in here, I think it's... I don't remember where the S is. It's uh, one of these. And, uh, oh yeah, it's here. Okay, and what the S here would do is that it would pick this down here instead of going west. So, and then it would go the other way around. And then every all the area would be negative. Uh, which is fine, but then the area of the curve changed because we weren't doing the right in the right order, basically. So what we basically do is that we just, from the starting point, we, we get the two uh, paths it could possibly go. And then we just compute the curve, right? We're going one way, going the other way. And then in the end, if the area is a positive, then we went the right way around. But if it's negative, we went the wrong way around. And then we what we have to do is we have to just take the absolute value. So the area is the same, but to calculate the curve area, so then these threes and ones don't match up, we have to go the other way around. So that's what we do. And uh, I think it works. So I'm very happy that the Green's theorem approach works. Right? We didn't have to do flood fill or anything. So I run it. Uh, it takes 288 milliseconds, which is not bad. I think. Let me, if I remove all the uh, running on the example, oh, that was the whole code. Remove all the running on the examples. Uh, it takes, uh, yeah, 200 milliseconds. But it's a lot faster than doing some quadratic flood, flood fill stuff, I think, because it's just, uh, it's just greens here. We're not even counting anything, we're just going around a curve. Now let's see if it works. Um, and then we can move on to day 11. 351, come on. Submit. Ooh, what? You don't seem to be solving the right level. Did you already complete it? Huh. Your present answer was 351. Okay. So we got it. It was just some weird thing in the submission. All right, day two, day 10, part two done. Now let's move on to day 10. Whoop, whoop. But uh, yeah, so the lesson of this kids is if you're not getting it right, don't keep hacking and coding. Just uh, write it up. All right, let's see. Let's do day 11. 11. I haven't looked at it yet. I accidentally clicked it earlier, but... Uh, I think... So I, the word on the street is that this one is not as hard as day 10 part, day 10 part 2. So hopefully 
will do it. it won't take too long but so we can also look at the stats uh, and we can see that it's dropping down fast but a lot of people not many people did, did only ah yeah okay sorry we can see here that a lot of people did day 10 but a lot of people also didn't complete part 2 same as here right uh, with part 2 of day 5 but most people have completed part 2 of day 1 so I think we're good let's go for day 11 anyway I like this puzzle and I really like that we could use uh, actual math green theorem uh, it just took us a while to discretize it correctly um, but as I said this makes my three years of hardcore calculus bachelors all worth it because we solved one adding the code in a slightly faster which is not bad okay so now we're looking for hot springs from course observatory okay he's studying cosmic expansion okay just working on his research process visiting okay ding, 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 ding. okay maybe you can help me analysis to speed things up the researchers collected a bunch of data and compiled the data into a single giant image the image includes empty space and galaxies the researcher is trying to figure out the sum of the lengths of the shortest path between every pair of galaxies. Wow. Do -do -do -do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thirty six pairs. For each pair, find any shortest path between the two galaxies. Only steps that move up, down, left, or right. Exactly one star or hash at the time. Okay, so the short path between galaxies to pass through another galaxy. For example, here is one of the shortest paths between galaxies 5 and 9. It took a minimum of 9 steps to get from galaxy 5 to 9. Ding, ding. Okay, this seems to be doable. Let's see. Let's look at the input. The input is going to be crazy big. With a lot of... Huh, okay, there's not so much empty space. Um... Okay. Let's copy-paste input. Doom, ding, ding, ding. Day 10. Good stuff. Let me just commit git and... A10.hs git add x x star git add example git add input I'm missing something no git commit um, day 10 part 2 let's uh, go to day 11 Day 11. Oh. Touch day 11.hs. Touch. Put. Now let's just paste the input here. And um, let's also paste the example.
Okay. It's like a classic pathfinding problem, right? Okay, uh, there's a catch. The universe is banned in time to live in the observatory. Okay, uh, any rows or columns that contain no galaxies should actually be twice as big. Okay. Up, down, left, or right. Okay. Let me close this picture. Boom, boom, boom. Now, let's close others. Let's see. Module. Okay. Example. So, what I really want is just a strings to list of pairs of ints and I want I want um, I also want to know the bounds okay parse example equals okay so first of all we're gonna see we're gonna do the empty lines uh, which is uh, where is empty or all equal to dot okay Let's say, let's not give us a type yet. Let's just say a uh, map is empty. Um, main IO main equals read file example. So this is going to be a case, like a solution where it's going to be easy to do it in a new way, uh, but hard to like, optimize it, I think. Print dot bars example. Bars example. Bring to boom. Uh, the lines right now GC day 11 oh day 11 mm, time 11 false 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 true false false so those are the empty um, So let's just see a uh, so we could do some hacking and just say uh, if it's empty then counts as two steps but uh, let's uh, process add empty not add empty row if empty then if the row is empty then r r r r then uh, r r 
add empty rs else r I think I can do this. Maybe I shouldn't, but ah, okay. Better do it the other way. Is it and then add empty? Okay, so we added a copy of the empty row. Now, um, add empty and then transpose dot add empty. And then we add empty again. Variable on scope transpose. It's actually GC 2021. Uh, import data dot list. Okay, so we added the empty, and then let's transpose again just to make it so we can print it nicely. Okay. So we got the same. Okay, so we've done the first part of the task. Um, now, let's see, I have a feeling, I think that they're going to say, uh, they're going to say that, like, part two is going to be like, oh, actually, um, Actually, the it it grew a lot faster or something. So the empty rows are going to be not just one extra one, but like a million. Anyway, um, map find indices. These are all the uh, galaxies. And now we're just going to get the coordinate zip with So we're going to take in the index and the list and we're going to map I or the list
Okay, and now we just concat these. So parse example. List of strings to a list of Okay. Now we have all the stars. This path has length 9 because it takes a minimum of 9 steps to get from galaxy 5 to galaxy 9. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's this one. 7. Okay, so 6, 1. To get to... 11, 5. Now we want the distance on a grid. Because a... Uh, I think it's called the taxi cab distance. Exactly. You know, I'm really, I'm really, uh, really working my, uh, I'm really working my math degree here. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, let's see. So the Manhattan distance. X1 minus X2. Dist X one Y one X one X two Y two to ABS X one X one minus X two minus no plus ABS Y one minus Y two Okay. Let's see. Um, part one, where equals so stars is equal to a where a. Chords is equal to parse example stars. Now let's uh, see a uh, chords five. Let's just print print dot. Parent, print dot part one. Right, okay, so you want number four here. Chords nine, eight. Okay. Hey, 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 hey Felix. Uh, good to see you again. We solved day 10 uh, using Green's theorem. Uh, let me just show you the explanation again. We use Green's theorem 
uh, we counted the area but uh, what we forgot to do was we forgot to deduct the area that the curve occupies and uh, it's not just uh, it's not enough to just say okay the corners take this much so the sides take 0 0.5 that's exactly like you said but uh, if you're taking, if you have an outward corner, it only takes 0 0.25. And if you have an inward corner, it takes 0 0.75. So by uh, using green searing to compute the area of everything, and then going through the curve again and looking at, uh, depending on the, like the orientation of the actual curves, uh, whether they were inward pointing or outward pointing, we could calculate the area of the curve. And then uh, we could make it work. So, it took some time. Uh, I had to sit down and write it up. But we got there eventually. Which is good. By the way, I hope my audio is still going strong. Anyway. And it turned out, and then we had to do another trick. We had to, uh, so what was wrong in the big example was not just the curve. It was also the fact that we were going the wrong way around. Uh, so to make this calculation make sense, you have to go clockwise. Because for the, if you go counterclockwise, you know, the, uh, there's a difference between the, whether it takes one or whether it takes three, depending on the direction you're going in. So. We just calculate, uh, figure out which direction we're going through. Figure the area of the whole thing using green serum. Um, and then deduct the area of the curve. Et voila, it worked. I'm quite happy uh, that we could use my math degree. To such good use. But okay, let's see. And now we're doing day 11. We're finding distances between points. Um, actually, I'm curry this, and I'm thinking we can do the taxi cab distance between two points. Um, so between Galaxy and Galaxy One and Galaxy Seven is supposed to be fifteen. Let me see. So this was five and nine. So let's just see. So we don't need to do any pathfinding, right? Uh, this is galaxy one and seven. Uh, three and six, eight and nine. So three and six and eight and nine. Nine, fifteen, seventeen, zero. Oh, that's not correct. Let's see. Nine, fifteen, seventeen, five. So we are just taking that distance, taxi cab distance. That's good. Um, so we need to now take the, so to find every combination of two things, I think in Haskell you can do something like this. So you take A and B. Come on, P. Divide over a uh, one, two, three, and then applicative four, five, six, and let's see, F map. I think this needs to be. Huh.
Why is it not doing the applicative? GTI. Data not applicative. What is going on here? It's in the prelude. What all? Ah, uh, okay. A, B, A, A, comma, B. So one 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 three two one two 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 three three one three two three three. Yeah, so exactly. So uh 0 0.5 inward we exactly what we were doing, but your solution was probably easier to program because you only need the previous interaction for the corners. Yeah, I mean so I did I did do that. I explained that earlier. That uh, so I started counting everything as a, as a block of four because we were, and then we imagine the point, you know, zero zero. It's going to be in the middle of the zero zero block, right? And then, uh, and then, so whenever you go down, you're adding two blocks, or like half, right? When you go down, you're uh, when you go up, you're you're, you're adding as well. Um, so it worked out. Okay, so now we're just gonna do... Um, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna... We are gonna say... Um, we're gonna say dist. And we are gonna fmap that over... Chords... Over chords... And uh, this will just work because the distance between, so we don't have to like filter out the galaxy to itself because it's going to be uh, zero. Do, 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 seven, four, eight. Ah, and now we did everything twice. Because the order doesn't matter, that's true. Okay, so we just divide this by two. Three seventy four. Exactly. That's it was supposed to be. Now let's do this on the input. And let's see if it works. All right. What extension is deducing the type? What do you mean deducing type? Ah, this is just the Haskell language server, HLS. Uh, it's in... You can make it work for WIM or Emacs, uh, but it's very nice for VS Code because it just has these nice. That's what kind of. That's why I started using VS Code actually, um, because it is quite nice for the HLS extension. Because you can just put in like hovers and it can do autocomplete and stuff. It's quite nice. Okay, now let's see. Aha, uh -huh, yes, exactly. Now instead of the expansion you did before, make each empty row or column one million times larger. That is, each empty row should be replaced with one million empty rows, and each empty column should be replaced with one million empty columns. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Okay. So, um... Let's see. Um, we just have to change the parse example. And because we're using taxi cab, you know, it's not gonna... It's not gonna take... It's not gonna be very bad. So, um... Part two is gonna be... Let's see. Uh, part two is gonna be the same. Part two, except we're gonna do parse example two. And here... Um, parse example two. Okay, and we are going to... We're not going to add empty. Uh, we need to add the empty... Columns. Let's just... Um, let's not add empty. Um, Do, 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 do. Um, let me just uh, do this again. Okay, read file. Example, and we're just going to do print. Uh, Map M print dot Mars example two and uh, okay. So is empty is the same. So let me see. Um, So, a, so empty rows is equal to um, so we're gonna say a sip and then we are gonna empty in sip okay and we're gonna say a filter a second and then is empty and we're gonna map first so we are gonna say a empty call rows equals empty ins um, okay let's leave this for now empty rows so let's see empty ins stirs and empty calls is equal to empty why is it like this? This is all wrong. Empty rows, calls, empty ins, transpose, stirs. And this should be a function, so it should look like this. Camel case, mixed casing, that's good. Okay, let's see. Uh, now, let's just print empty rows, empty calls.
Okay. Um... We're getting two five eight. How are we getting that? Um, we should be getting two things, huh? Empty. Ah, or map and printing. Oh my god, this is that stupid change that gave uh, pairs like a thing. Man. Empty calls. Three seven two five eight. Okay, now let's find the original indices, uh, which we do with exactly exactly like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in um, and uh, stirs. Okay, so these are the original indices. Um, so zero, three, one, seven, two, zero. Now, um, We're gonna we're gonna add to the to the empty rows. We're gonna add to these. Uh, so let's see. Uh, let's say add add to. So for everything that's after three, we want to add a million. And for everything up after seven, we want we want to add uh, two million. Okay. So let's just see here. Okay, add two. It's just a. Uh, so if we're not adding anything, we just do so far. Okay. Add two. Uh, so far, x axis. Add two. Row. So far, x axis. Okay, so we're gonna say here um, map so far to so far. We're gonna say a x comma y. Uh, let's see, ec. Uh, okay. X comma Y. Uh, we're gonna say uh, if X larger than E C, then X plus one 
million why else thanks come away okay uh, this is gonna be so far prime where so far prime is equal to so we map over them we modify all of them but now we also have to say uh, add to row uh, so far prime and then we also have to say plus one million to the rest of them uh, map map plus one million x's because we want to because all, now all of them are going to be like um, they're going to have the they're because they're going to be uh, yeah so because we also modify in this off the empty row right okay and add to call So far, prime is is just if uh, y is equal larger than c, then a uh, one million. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's just um. Add to call. Let's write them out actually. Orig, orig ints. So the it there is a faster way to do this, right? We don't actually have to modify all of them. We can just say if they are they are in a certain location that that uh, we would add to them there let me see add to call auric in a empty rows so this way we also name it add to call so I'm to add to row okay and add to row of this I had to call column this of a empty calls so uh, yeah so it's after the first time so there's a million there million two yep yeah, I think we're good <laughs> okay, now let's just make sure that this is all a um, far as example like this. And it's a list of integer, comma, integer coordinates, just so we are not integer, integer, auric ints, uh, find indices. Okay, um, do integer. Oh. And now it's all integers. And we do R2. It's gonna be an integer. 
and um, Let's see. And let's let's first check on the example actually. Oh, this is the example. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, and let's also take in this number. Uh, D. Let's just one. Let's replace this million with D. One. Okay, and part two, D, A, D. Now let's we'll say part two, mm -mm -mm. in the example above, each EV generator will merely 10 times larger the sum of the shortest path between every pair of galaxies would be 1030. Is it because we... Do maybe it's 11. Or 9. Okay, we got something wrong. Here, um... Did I do larger than equal to? No. Mm -hmm. We are quite close though. Right, so we have to add D minus one. Um, D equals D minus one. D prime. Uh, and then we should add here a um, N. And 30 and then let's print it again if it's a uh, hundred then it should be eight four ten now let's do the input one million No. <laughs> Let's see. All right. We did day 11. And yeah. Not too bad today. Uh, I think we figured out we were good at finding the generalization. So it worked out quite well. Um and the trick was using the taxi cab distance, right? If we had gone, if we had been like, oh, shortest path, let's do pathfinding. It would have been a mess, actually. Anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in. I hope you liked day 11. And let's see how day 12 goes. 
But again, I'm quite happy with uh, that we made we were able to do T10 part two using Green's theorem. Check out the YouTube video. Uh, like so, the beginning of this video for the explanation. If you want to see it, um, it's going to be on YouTube tomorrow in 24 hours, and it will. Uh, I mean, the video on demand will also be here. So, all right. Thanks for tuning in today, and uh, see you tomorrow or day 12. Okay. Bye bye.